clean, fresh water. The sound of it is like music. It comes in every volume and is heard by all of us. It's a melody that we come to appreciate at a very young age. And it's a tune we never tire of. The water that surrounds us and runs through us is vital to all life, now and in the future. Water is at the heart of our image of who we are as Minnesotans and what we want for our children and grandchildren. And it's essential for our regional and national economies. We boast of our lakes on our license plates. We take pride in the Mississippi River and the Boundary Waters Canoe Area and celebrate our kinship with Lake Superior, the greatest of the Great Lakes. We also benefit from a wealth of ancient water in the aquifers beneath our feet. As Minnesotans, we also depend heavily on groundwater. But will our children and grandchildren inherit a legacy of unspoiled water? The Freshwater Society has been at the forefront of our struggle to conserve and protect our waters for over 40 years. While much has been accomplished, much more remains to be done. Our recent studies have come to some important conclusions. Minnesota is blessed with abundant groundwater. 90% of us rely on it for our drinking water but it's a resource that must be monitored more carefully. Groundwater is, is something that's real easy to take for granted. We're so accustomed to, to drilling wells and pumping water. And when we start running low, we just drill the wells deeper. But we're beginning to, to see that uh, groundwater is a limited resource. Some areas of the state are already running short. In the dry southwest, citizens are seeking to import water from South Dakota. The northwest and northeastern parts of the state also have limited supplies. And a number of metro suburbs will need to restrict their use of groundwater or look to other sources to meet their projected future demand. Groundwater withdrawal is currently at a rate higher than population growth. Agricultural irrigation using groundwater is also up significantly all when the state is enjoying higher than normal precipitation. What happens if we have a drought like in the 30s, 1976 or 1988? As we uh, continue to grow in population, we all know, of course, that we need a lot of water to sustain our lives. We pump water with little or no thought to uh, the sustainability of that water use. So we have to be real careful that we're not contaminating those groundwaters. It's going to preclude its use for future generations. Protecting the water from contaminants is another concern. Everything we do to the land or on the land has the potential to affect the water beneath our land in ways we may not completely understand today. Compounds from farm fertilizers and septic systems have been found in elevated concentrations in central and southeastern Minnesota and the Twin Cities metro area. 40% of individual septic systems are failing, jeopardizing ground and surface water quality. Chemical compounds from products manufactured decades ago find their way into well water and municipal systems. Pharmaceuticals and personal care products are turning up in trace amounts and pass right through our current water treatment systems. We have reduced many of the most blatant forms of water pollution. Large industrial sources and municipal sewage were at one time the biggest threat to the health of our lakes, rivers and streams. We have done much to reduce these large sources. Today, these represent 14% of the pollution in our waters. Our greatest challenge today is in many ways more difficult. 
Now our task is in reducing the impact of the remaining 86% of pollution, the many diverse and much smaller non-point sources, agricultural runoff, the residues of urban development, and the byproducts of our everyday activities all contribute to this pervasive non-point pollution. In Minnesota we've looked at a little bit less than 20 percent of the streams and lakes. What we found was disturbing. We find this issue of non-point pollution which is hard to get a handle on but very very dangerous for waters. But what really is frightening is we don't know about the other 80 percent of the waters. What is really going on with mercury contamination? What's happening with farm runoff? What's happening with the abuse and the overuse of the aquifers? Our 12,200 lakes and thousands of miles of rivers and streams are in jeopardy. 40% are contaminated by one or more water quality problems. Our wetlands are also an important water resource. Not only do wetlands filter water contaminants, mitigate flooding and replenish groundwater, but they are a vital ecosystem for fish, birds and other wildlife. Unfortunately, more than 50% of Minnesota's 20 million acres of wetlands have been filled, drained, or destroyed by pollution, urban development, and agricultural practices. The label of Minnesota as water rich does not fit as well as once thought. And treating water as an unlimited resource until a problem develops is not good management. Educating our youth is another key to a sustainable future for our water. Here at Eagle Bluff Environmental Learning Center, students learn about how natural systems work together to clean and preserve our freshwater supply. The music of our precious freshwater supply is all around us. It's a natural music, diverse in its beauty, it's a music that we all hear every day and a music that we can control. It's a music that must last forever and with your help it will.